Good morning. This morning, I'm sure you are glad that you are not having to get out and drive through whatever snow quantity you got it at your place of living. But we have the privilege of an opportunity of not having to cancel the service because we are ready for Sunday morning. One announcement, the prayer vigil is February 17th. That's not very far off. The sign up for either praying here at the church or praying in your home uh, needs to be filled in. If you are calling in to schedule a time, do that on Monday or Thursday mornings between 8 and 11. Patty will get you on the list. But we would like to have all of those time slots filled. Surely we can uh, afford time-wise at least a half hour, and for some even an hour if you so desire, so that all of the times are filled for the 12-hour period between 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. on the 17th. And now as we are ready to quiet our hearts and minds, let's listen to our prelude. Maggie is our soul, our pianist today. That was wonderful. What a way to begin our worship today. Please join in the responsive call to worship. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I be afraid? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. One thing I ask of you, O Lord, and that 
I willed to live in her house all the days of my life, to behold her beauty and to see you in your temple. Please pray with me. God of love and justice, we long for peace within and peace without. We long for harmony in our families, for serenity in the midst of struggle, and for commitment to each other's growth. We long for the day when our homes will be a dwelling place for your love. Yet we confess that we are often anxious. We lose trust in each other, and we may harbor violence or we may not be willing to take the risks and make the sacrifices that love requires. Look upon us with kindness and grace. Rule in our homes and in all the world. Show us how to walk in your paths through the mercy of our Savior. Amen. Please join in the singing of our hymn, There is a Place of Quiet Rest. Sharing of our joys and concerns, I don't, I have not had anybody call with concerns or even joys. So let's do our, let's sing our prayer hymn. Lord, listen to your children pray. Listen to your children pray. We anticipate storms, but we know that there is great suffering now in California with the torrential rains, the mudslides, All across our country, there are still the threats of violence. God, we pray again and asking, 
show us the way to peace. God, we are more hopeful with the pandemic. At the same time, we know that there are mutations of new forms of the coronavirus. And there's so, still so much that is not known. Will the new vaccines that we are receiving, will they actually be effective in preventing some of these new mutations also? God, at the same time, we pray for our government. Some of us are very hopeful. Some of us are still resentful. But the will of the people of the United States of America has spoken. And we need to put aside the claims of wrong and fraud in such an election. It's time to let it go, for there has been no evidence to prove that that was so. And God, as there are schools where the children long to be back in school, that the schools still are not open. Teachers not wanting to go back into the schools, threatening to strike again. God, with the vaccine seemingly in short supply or not being distributed into areas May the step up that seems to be happening with the vaccines being available that the teachers can get their vaccinations and feel safe in returning to the schools. For without teachers, we can have no pupils in the schools. We give thanksgiving that in our area there is school. There are schools that are open, and there is still the choice between remote or virtual learning and being in school. We have so many freedoms in this country that we take for granted and do not give thanksgiving for this country that we live in. When we can turn off the hate and once again unite and be loving and kind to one another, this will go a long way in making peace. At the same time, they are still identifying the rioters from January 6th. More of them being found. One would wonder, is there any way of reaching through the violent aspirations of the militia groups, the individuals, even within our Congress, that are a threat. That we can somehow get away from the idea of Nazism, fascism, genocide, all the things that they threaten to do in our culture today.
God, we praise and worship you this Sunday morning. For you have been the creator of our world and given we human beings the responsibility of taking care of your creation. May each and every one of us practice being loving, being kind, being conservative, taking time to do the things that each and every one of us can do to preserve your universe And all God's people said, Amen. Worshiping our gifts, come, my scripture comes from 2 Corinthians 9.10. Now he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will also supply and increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, may your kingdom be uppermost in our heart, minds, and lives. Accept our gifts given in love and devotion, and with them our renewed dedication of all that we are and have to your eternal glory. Amen. Today's scripture comes from Psalm 46 through 47.2. Familiar words. God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear. Though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, Though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging, there is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her. She will not fall. God will help her at break of day. Nations are in uproar. Kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice. The earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come and see what the Lord has done, the desolations he has brought on the earth. He makes wars cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. He says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Clap your hands, all you nations. Shout to God with cries of joy. For the Lord Most High is awesome, the great King over all the earth. I have wanted to preach about the power of silent prayer, and it seems the appropriate time since we are preparing for a prayer vigil. According to psychologist Dr. Ann Wilson Schaefe, 98% of us are addicted to something that helps us cope with life. She points out that the word addiction comes from the old French word attaché, which refers to a junior member of an official government staff who gets attached to an ambassador or some high-ranking official. We get addicted or attached to something that helps us numb our pain or lessens the boredom or meaninglessness of our lives. We might fill the emptiness with food or veg out in front of a TV. Or we might engage in feats of physical endurance or professional achievement 
that distract us from our inner turmoil. I can tell you I was addicted to work. Whenever I felt stressed or um, not under pressure, but things may not have been going well at home, I poured myself that much more into work. That's an addiction. And I think I was doing it proudly because I could accomplish so much more. And that's not Christian. Sometimes we can be addicted to things that aren't necessarily bad. They may even be good, like coffee, exercise, and work. But we can't, if we can't say no to something, then it is something that we are attached to. And when we are attached to something, we are in its service. We love our freedom. And the thing that we are addicted to disrupts and even displaces God as the center of our lives. The Bible has one word for this. Can you guess? Idolatry. Bill W. experienced alcohol taking everything that mattered to him, his work, reputation, relationships, family, and his freedom. His alcoholism landed him in jail. He hit rock bottom. And he helped to form what we know today as Alcoholics Anonymous. He's anonymous in that we don't even know his last name, only W. It's 12-step program that has become a model for addiction treatment around the world He admitted that he was powerless to manage his life, which is step one, powerless to manage your life. And he came to believe that the only power greater than himself could restore his sanity, step two. He entrusted his life into the care of God, step three, and experienced a profound spiritual awakening. He began to follow Jesus and got involved in a small fellowship called the Ox- Christians called the Oxford Group, who were studying the wisdom of Jesus. He formulated the 12 step program and found freedom. Step 11 in those 12 steps is sought through prayer and meditation to improve our conscious contact with God. And that's what my message is about this morning. Prayer and meditation. One of the ways we entrust our lives to the care of God and experience freedom from what we are addicted to or over overly attached to is improving our conscious contact with God through prayer and meditation. Jesus said Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened. The call to prayer is a process where we seek to cultivate our conscious contact with God through both prayer, speaking to God, and meditation, where the emphasis is on quietly absorbing the presence of God. In the traditional form of prayer, we are actively involved in verbally expressing ourselves to God. But in meditation, in silent prayer, we take a more receptive attitude. From today's scripture, Psalms 46.10, the psalmist simply prays, Be still and know that I am God. Sitting silently in the presence of God, as useless as that may seem, can actually help set us free from the things that we are overly attached to. Think about that. In the Old Testament, God sometimes brings his people into a place of freedom by calling them, calling them to engage in battle with their enemies. Other times in the scriptures, We see God calling his people to simply be still and wait for the Lord to deliver them. 
Exodus 14, 14 says, The Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still. In the Old Testament, there are times when God wants to lead his people to a place of freedom. And he leads them to actively engage in battle with their enemies and other times when he simply calls them to be still and to watch his hand deliver them. In our personal lives, there are times when we are called to wage a frontal attack on the enemies within ourselves. There is a dark place inside each one of us and other times when we are to simply be still before the Lord and watch him deliver us and restore, restore our souls. Think about Psalm 23. There are times when God simply calls us literally or figuratively to lie down in green pastures beside still waters to restore our souls. As we are freed from the anxiety and pain in our hearts, we are less likely to turn to darker things for comfort because our heart can find peace through God. Being still doesn't always mean being literally still. Sometimes it means moving. John Cassian, a great spiritual father of the 5th century, instructed the monks under his care to weave baskets, pray, and meditate. Some of you women who crochet and knit, do you also fill your mind with whatever's on the radio or TV at the time, or do you do this sometimes in the silence while letting your heart and mind meditate? John Cassian understood that sometimes a little physical movement can foster a greater stillness of mind, depending on our wiring, you know, up here, and temperament. Some of us find that if we are simply sitting still and trying to focus on one thing, we are easily distracted by random thoughts come crashing into our minds. You have good intentions and you sit quietly And then all of a sudden, the wiring in your brain gives you something to be aware of, and you start worrying about that instead of God. For some of us, a little bit of mental activity helps to still our mind, taking a drive in the country, especially out in Pine Creek on some of those back roads, not on the day when there's snow filling it in, but enjoying God's creation out there where the traffic isn't can be so peaceful. You don't have to pay a whole lot of attention on the road except to on the narrow ones that are out there, make sure you stay on the road because sometimes there's a deep ditch right alongside. For other people there might be the taking a long walk, going for a hike in the pines. For others, running. Some some of those physical activities can actually help to still your mind. Martin Laird wrote a book on contemplation. Contemplation, silent prayer, meditation. Titled, Into the Silent Land. He describes a woman who had deep pain all the way from childhood. When she was a young girl sitting in her bedroom and looking at herself in the mirror, her mother came in and exclaimed, I hope you don't think you're beautiful. She was, in fact, a very beautiful girl in every part of her life. She was beautiful, but she was told she was beautiful ugly, and she believed she was ugly. When she was a teenager, she won a prestigious scholarship to study ballet. But her mother said, why would they give you that? Everybody knows you have two left feet. 
Although she became a celebrated dancer who performed all over the world, she believed she was an ugly klutz. Eventually, she found solace. She was living in England, and she took long walks across the moors. If she walked long enough, her mind began to settle. The scented heather was a soothing balm that relieved her anger, her fear, and her pain. On one of those walks, her anxiety began to drop. And she was suddenly aware of being immersed in a holy, loving presence that upheld her in everything. That experience only happened once, but it was a turning point in her life, drawing her more deeply into the way of prayer. St. Augustine had a phrase, it is solved by walking. For some, walking is a way of being still before the Lord. For others, being still before the Lord means literally being still and sitting in God's presence. Someone has shared a helpful way is to focus on a brief portion of scripture by taking a deep breath in while saying, Be still letting it out, and know that I am God. Try it. Be still and know that I am God. It's a good exercise. If you take a deep breath, your doctor's going to like that too because it will fill your lungs. While sitting quietly, In God's presence and relax, sometimes the anxiety that surfaces or deep disappointment, resentment, anger, it's a good time to lift those very things up in prayer. Those of you that aren't aware or haven't done a half-hour stint in prayer during prayer vigil, You'd be surprised how fast that half hour goes. If you prayed about everything that came into your mind, it would fill more than the half hour. But it's a time of freedom. You don't have to pray out loud. Meditate. Who is this God that I believe in? How can I become closer? to God. The time will come when you will feel enveloped in the holy loving presence of God if you allow yourself that time and do some practicing with it. When we are meditating sometimes garbage surfaces in our life. We may feel anxiety or fear or remember a wound or feel anger. We can offer those things up to God and hand it over to him. It is not a usual thing to experience anything particularly dramatic. So if you think something dramatic is going to happen, it would be unusual. In ancient times, when a city-state would defeat their enemies, the military would burn that city down and build another city on top. Some of us have seen the Copan ruins in Honduras, the Mayan culture. Remember the first time that I was there. There is a a tour within the tour. There is a a city underground. I'm not into close places and I surely didn't want to adventure or venture down into to that, but knowing that you are on the top of what is now the Copan ruins and that there is another city underneath is it's mind boggling. When archaeologists are working on one of these sites, they first clean off the top 
and get rid of the rocks and weeds and unearth civilization that once thrived there. They send the pottery, mosaics, and tools to a museum. Then they come back and dig up the next city-state. The process of digging down level by level through the various civilizations can take many years. And as they make their way all the way down, they can indeed come to the Stone Age. Father Thomas Keating says the Holy Spirit is a divine archaeologist who works in a similar way. The Spirit usually starts where we are now, whatever our age. The first thing the Holy Spirit typically does is to help heal the most destructive aspects of our addictive behaviors and current relationships. The Spirit works through our lives and goes deeper and deeper, working toward our earliest emotional life. This is why children suffer when their childhood has been traumatized, how it affects emotions in their very being all through life. We know from experience there is so much pressure coming from outside of us that we can easily start to live outside of ourselves and neglect our interior life. There is something about sitting or walking or even running silently in God's presence that helps us to recognize that ancient beauty ever new that is within us and helps us to the living God who lives within us. As we become more aware of the beauty of God's presence in our lives, we are made whole. When we are still in the presence of God and hear Jesus Christ, Playing into our souls, there is something inside us that lifts and straightens. We are made whole and less likely to turn to behaviors that may bring temporary pleasure or even to other voices that make us try to achieve success. Richard Foster says, Contemplative prayer puts us into the silence of God. We have become, as the early church father Clement of Alexandria says, like old shoes, all worn out except for our tongues. With all our sophisticated high-tech telecommunication systems, we now have the distinction of being able to communicate more and say less than any civilization in history. But we give thanks for the telecommunication because we can bring you a worship service when you can't come here. Contemplative prayer is the one discipline that can free us from our addiction to words. Progress in relationship with God means progress toward silence. So let's practice some silence in our prayer vigil, whether here at the church or at home, and be in the presence of God, truly intentional presence of God. Amen. Our closing hymn is Spirit of God, Descend Upon Us.
Great God, give us open hearts and minds. Grant us a vision of you as you are and of the world as it might be. Touch our lips. Give us words of truth for one another. Then set us free to do what you ask of us. For Jesus' sake, amen.